Today I'm going to show you how to do a half housing join. Joins which we call interlocking joins, where the two pieces of timber actually lock together. Where we have more surface areas joining, so we have a greater amount of strength. In the workshop at Marimba Secondary, hi, I'm Miss Fechner, and uh, I'm going to show you, as I said, the interlock, how to set out and uh, produce an interlocking join, the half housing. There's a little bit to work out and work through with the housing join, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we just need to take it in steps. So we have our marking out, we have our cutting, and then we have our chiselling. Marking out on this one piece of timber. So the second piece of timber we can actually put to the side. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to mark out 20 mil from the end. Because we want this piece of timber to actually sit in there, we're going to create a corner for it to sit in, or a little shoulder. And we need to mark out the thickness of our timber so we can remove that waste. So 20 mil first off, then for the marking out we use a combination square or some sort of tri-square. It's really important when you use a tri-square that you lay the edge right along nice and tight to the edge of your piece of timber. So I'm holding that right to the edge and then I'm going to rule my line. Also want to put that marking down onto the sides of my piece of timber so when I chisel through I can actually see where I'm supposed to be chiselling. I'm going to transfer that down, it doesn't matter if you go. And transfer that down as well. Now we need to know our depth that we're going to go to. Now I need to mark out this part here for the second line for my shoulder. We're not going to use a ruler though for this part. We're going to put that aside. And we're actually going to use another funny tool, which is called a marking gauge. We use a marking gauge in place of a ruler, so we can do repetitive 10 mil. Because remember, my piece of timber is 20 mil thick. So I'm going to set my marking gauge to 10 mil. Now, don't worry too much about a marking gauge. Your marking gauge at this stage, just give it a go. They can be a little bit tricky. So best just to get in there and have a go with them but I can give you a few points. Now if I grab my pencil, in that little dint, okay, so that's my marking out for the half housing. I need to have my depth and, sorry, my width and then I need to have my depth as well. Put pencil in there and what I can do just to solidify what I'm doing is I can put some X's, marks a spot, so I remember which bit I'm removing as waste. So that's the bit I'm going to remove. Next thing is to cut your timber and then chisel out that waste. I might move the camera out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a bit easier. Now we've done our marking out, we just need to do the first cut in the housing just to loosen up this timber so we can chisel down through and remove the waste. So the best way to cut uh, this timber is using a one of these is a bench hook. I've, se I've secured it into the vise and this allows me something to push up against. 
I'm going to use the palm of my hand along here and also of course I'm going to tuck my thumb in. So my fingers don't actually touch the timber. I want to line up and use this bench hook also as a guide. So the first thing to do to get your, your cut started is to draw back with your tenon saw along that line or just on the waist side. So that allows the saw to key into the timber. And from there we can just lay our saw down and saw along the line. The marks that we put on the side down here when we marked out, that allows us to see how deep we need to cut. find when people cut along a line like this is they actually leave a little bit of a hump on the inside so they rock their saw from one way to the other and don't actually cut straight through down in the bottom there. If, the, if you don't do that the timber won't release because this line that we've cut has actually allowed us then to chisel down and that timber to release out of that uh, join really easily. So that's all we need our saw for. As you can see, I've cut down through there, down to the bottom of that. Now that I've cut along this line, down to the marking, that I've put on earlier, the next step for me is to chisel out the timber. So I'm going to secure my piece of timber in the vise and I'm going to slip it way down in the vise, not leave it hanging up in the air. If I have it this way, there's more vibration and the timber isn't as secure. Tighten the vise up nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. And then we can just chisel straight down and that waste timber will just release. Using the marking gauge earlier to mark out our join, also created a little groove in the timber. To chisel out the timber, I like to hold my chisel down a little bit on the blade when I'm doing work like this. It's only small work. This is just a general chisel. It's 19mm wide and it's beveled on all sides. Nice sharp point. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can go for gold and chisel out all the timber at the one time or you can go halfway. Now because I've cut along that line, the timber's just going to fall away. Now I'll go for the second half. If I haven't cut right down to the bottom of that line, the timber won't be able to release. So it's really important that you get that line right down to the, that cut right down to the bottom. I'm just using the flat side of my chisel because I want a nice straight line and I've already got a cut there that's allowing the timber to release.
So I've got the bulk of my timber out of that joint. Then I can clean it up by hand. Get up over the top of your timber. Seems to be a little bit raised still on that side. But that's sitting in there quite nicely. So just as with the butt joint, we're going to use our bench and our vise to secure our piece of timber while we're nailing and gluing it together. The difference between the butt joint and this type of housing joint is that we've got two surfaces that are making contact on each piece of timber. Uh, unlike the butt join where we have one surface and one surface on each piece of timber joining, this one we have two on each. So we need to put glue on both pieces of timber on all those surfaces. So once again, you need to lay out the glue a little bit extra on the end grain and down onto that side. And then we need to put glue all over this surface of this joint and right in the corner. Always need to make sure that we have a good amount of glue on surfaces when we're gluing, when we're, uh, gluing them up. You should be able to just see through the glue and have it um, just a little bit transparent. If you can see all the way into the glue, through the glue, you haven't got enough on there. As long as you clean it up well, it doesn't matter if you have a little extra. As long as it's not too much and it makes it sloppy. You could get your nails started beforehand. I'm just going to go straight for it. I'm going to use the carpenter's trick today. I'm just going to take the point off the timber just to help it not split. And once again, we've got 20 mil thick timber, so we've got about 20 mils to play with. We want to place our nail right in the middle of that width. We'll just get those started. Placing them evenly along the width. Now checking that we actually have these two pieces of light lined up. I've done it a few times, so I didn't check too, too much. You might need to make sure that you, you uh, check yours before you nail your pieces of timber together. And we're hammering the nails home. A little bit of glue coming through, and that's good. Clean that up. And there we have a half housing. 